Good morning, Virginia. This is Virginia This Morning. Well, wouldn't it be nice to achieve an optimum balance for your life? In Japanese garden. Coming up next, an expert shares nine ways to help you on your quest toward a more fulfilling life. Ooh, starts in the Japanese gardens, Probably. I bet. That's yeah. right. High achievers don't usually have a problem getting things done. Often their challenge is balancing it all, sometimes leaving them feeling unfulfilled. Our next guest says following her nine steps can put you on the road to achieving optimum life balance. We welcome Sherry Riley, creator of the Exponential Living Program. Good morning. Good morning, Cheryl. Thanks so much for seeing you. You just kind of walked in and lit up the room, so you have, <laughs> have tapped into something. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. You've got nine points, and it's interesting yes. because the first one you talk about living, um, healthy living mm -hmm. is more than just eating right. It's, yes. it's kind of an overall thing. It really is because when we think of healthy living, we only go to diet or exercise. But there's healthy people that are unhappy. There's healthy people that are out of balance when it comes to just their physical being. What about your psychological health, your spiritual health, your emotional health? And a lot of high achievers, they don't have a problem eating right and exercising because it's an issue of discipline. Mm. But when you ask them, well, what are you doing about who you are as a person? Are you fulfilled? And most of them spend 100% of their time on 10% of who they are but they expect 100% of their fulfillment. Wow, so we, we, we really need to become a whole person. Yes. That's the main thing. All right, point number two, peace and a positive mm. mind, your defender in the face of distraction. Yes, we start our day with Facebook, text messages, social media. We start our day with getting breakfast ready. But we never really think about how do we just center ourselves? How do we take a moment, whether it's prayer or meditation, whether it's just centering ourselves to get perspective, before we start running. Mm -hmm. And so peace and a positive mind allows you to really have a clear perspective about what's going on with that day. So a lot of times we get emotionally charged about a conversation or an issue at work where if we were just grounded in peace, then we would have a different perspective, which 90% of the things that cause us to get emotionally charged don't even really need our time or our energy or our thoughts. So it allows you to really begin to learn how to discern what's really important and what really needs your energy. Kind of like start your day the way you want your day to be. Yes, and end your day with gratitude mm. instead of, oh my God, I didn't get this done, I didn't get that done, but really focus on what did you accomplish that day. Did you spend quality time with your children and not just getting things done mm -hmm. and really enjoy that and end your day in that spirit of gratitude and then start your day in that spirit of, of meditation and peace. And also point number three is the importance of having a giving heart and spirit. Yes. So being about more than just yourself. Being about more than just yourself, being about more than just your family, being about more than just your that career or that moment in that job. It's like how do you really give of yourself? And a lot of times it's not even about charitable activities. It's about giving to your children, giving to your spouse, not just talking to your spouse about the bills, not just making sure your children did their homework. I've noticed with my daughters, I have a 13 year old and a five year old, when I just stop and listen and go into their world, when I give them that, my home is so much more at peace because all they want is me. I'll never forget there was a segment on Oprah and a young child's mother passed from cancer. And the one thing she remembered was the morning her and her mother laid in the bed eating Cheerios. She didn't remember, you know, that was what was important. Mm -hmm. So when you realize that giving is more than just running to that next charitable event or donating that money to church, but it's really just stopping and giving of your heart and your spirit to those who you love and love you. Sharing of yourself, that's yes. the main thing. Um, one of the, that brings me to another point down the road a little bit is stop working so you can maximize <laughs> your opportunities. Yes, on July 13th, 2010, I stopped working. Now my company, Glue, I've had 14 <laughs> years, I still do that every day. But I, what I meant was, you have to stop thinking about your job as something you go to to do. And start looking at it as, okay, what can I do today to maximize this opportunity? When you came in here today to talk to me and those other guests that you've talked to, instead of just, okay, I got that done, it's, 
what do they have to bring? What do they have to offer that can help me in my daily life, mm -hmm. in my daily life? So it's looking at everything you do every day as a way to maximize opportunities. That mindset alone relieves so much of the pressure of what work or what I got to do, regardless of your profession, regardless of what your job is. Look at it as an opportunity to just maximize this moment and be present in that present moment. It's like a lot of people say they love their job so much that it's mm -hmm. not like going to work. Yes. Yes, that's exactly it. Go to life. Mm -hmm. Don't go to work. Go to life. That's just a segment of our life. Yes, that is a segment. <laughs> it is. And, and you, one of the other points that you say is the courage to be faithful. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. The courage to be faithful really sums up how you get to exponential living. Because once you go through all of these steps, you then have to have the courage to make the change. A great example is there's a young lady who's a very successful radio personality, but she's always wanted to do more. She's always wanted to honestly work in sports mm -hmm. as a, a TV an analyst. But she was very successful in radio and a very good friend of mine. But as we wor worked with each other and I coached her and we really talked about the fulfillment of all of who she is, radio was only a segment of that. But it took the courage to, to sit before her audience and say, I'm gonna leave because this is what I wanna do. It takes the courage to go through the process of what is the research that you may have to do to change. It takes the courage when you're 44 and the doctor says you right at the verge of high blood pressure and high cholesterol. It takes the courage to say, okay, I'm going to commit time to exercise. It takes courage to say, I'm the vice president of a major corporation, but all I've ever wanted to do is teach. Now how do I leave? How do I make that transition? So it takes courage to really make the decision and then act out and live out the steps to make that change. Because most of us live in our comfort zones and we never step outside. And it's and the thing, the value is, when you know you're leaving to go into, John Maxwell says it greatly, is that the sacrifices, you have to let go to go up. There's things, you just have to reevaluate your priorities. This may be the way, you're VP and you've, this is how you've made your money, this is how you've taken care of your family. Well, make the decisions on how do you adjust. How do you realign your priorities? Because are you really giving value to your family if you're only financially providing for them but you're emotionally disconnected? So it's how do you evaluate those priorities, make the right shifts, make some hard decisions, and realize that some dreams you've already accomplished, so you can check that off the list. You've already accomplished the dream of being VP. Mm -hmm. It's okay to now accomplish a different dream. The next goal. The Sherry next goal. Riley, thank you so much. Some great food for thought this morning. Thank you for having me. I love the opportunity to talk to You're you. You're very welcome.